Hola, children. Teacher Dharmawan here. I hope you are safe and well. Are you ready for our Sunday school today? Great. Let's start our Sunday school with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we give thanks for your grace and mercy. As we worship you today in Sunday school, please give us humble hearts and listening ears. We pray for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and obedience. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. I'm sure most of you know this song, but if you don't, no worries, just sing along. So let's sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing. I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord, forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my heart will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my heart will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth. All right, that was a very good song, isn't it? Okay, before we listen to the Bible story, let's play a quick game. I call this game Quick Look. So this is how we are going to play it. I will show a set of images for only five seconds. And you will have to take a quick look of the image. And then choose which images show an act of helping. Are you ready? Let's begin. Here is the first set of images. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Did you take a quick look of the images? Now, pick your choices. Which of these images show an act of helping? Okay, have you made your choice? If your answer is number one and number three, you are correct. As we can see, number one, the person is helping the old lady by giving his seed. And number three, the young woman is helping the old grandpa to sit on his wheelchair. While picture number two, number four, and number five are actually showing people who needs help. Okay, are you ready for the next set of images? Five, four, three, two, one. 
All right. There were six images here. Now pick your choices. Which of these images show an act of helping? Okay, the answer is picture number two and number six. So if you guess number two and number six, you are correct. Now let's see, okay, the first image or the first picture is just showing someone riding a bicycle. The third picture showing um, someone in a race. The fourth is showing two people uh, going for hiking maybe. And number five, just two people working together. But number two and number six, you can see that uh, they are helping someone. Okay, last set of images. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, it's getting tougher because there were seven images there. So now, did you get to uh, take a quick look? So which of these images show an act of helping? If you answer number one, number two, number four, number five, and number seven, you are correct. Wow, there are so many of them. Well, I think um, you can see picture number one, the children are helping their mommy to wash the dishes. And then picture number two, the boy is helping his daddy to wash his car. And picture number four, you can see what is the person doing there? He is actually donating his blood to help other people who are sick and need a blood transfusion. And picture number five, you can see that the daddy is helping his daughter to study, right? And then the last picture, the couple are helping the earth by planting a tree, right? While picture number three and number five is just showing a child or a boy who is naughty. Okay, so today's game theme is about helping. But what does it mean to be a helper? What do you think it means to be a helper? Being a helper or someone who helps means sacrificing your energy, time, and effort to help others. Now, after seeing all these images, have you ever been a helper in a situation like in the image, in any of the image? I'm sure you have. Well, sometimes you need to be brave to be a helper. For example, helping mom calm down a baby brother or sister at the doctor's office. Or telling your parents that you broke something and helping to clean it up. I'm sure you have all been uh, brave before. And you have all been a helper. Sometimes you have been both at the same time. You know, when we help others, it encourages them. It makes them feel better and makes their hearts glad. Sometimes it is fun and easy to be a helper, but sometimes it is hard. Sometimes it takes a lot of courage. So today, I'm going to tell you a story about a young man who helped his uncle. In this story, the young man had to be brave. And his act encouraged his uncle uh, that his nephew helped him. So let us find out about this young man and his uncle. This is Paul. Yes, the Apostle Paul. God called Paul to be his servant. He had a big and important job for Paul to do. And God said, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. This meant that Paul was going to be a missionary 
who would travel to many parts of the world and preach to many different people. Paul obeyed God's call and carried the message of the gospel everywhere. He preached to the Jews and the Gentiles. Then he visited the churches he had started and encouraged other believers. After Paul had made three missionary journeys, he was eager to return to Jerusalem. But people told him that it would be dangerous for him to go to Jerusalem. Many people there want to kill you because you preach about Jesus, they say. Paul knew that was true, but he believed God wanted him to go to Jerusalem. So he was brave and he went. When Paul arrived in Jerusalem, the Christians there were glad to see him and listen to what he had to say. And then Paul and his friends went to the temple. While they were there, some Jews from Asia saw Paul. This man is our enemy, they shouted. He doesn't preach the truth. He speaks against our people and the law. Help us get rid of him. So these men stirred up the crowd and all the people became very angry at Paul. They seized him, dragged him away from the temple, and began to beat him. The crowd didn't know that Paul preached the truth and that it was his enemies who were really wrong. Then the Roman commander and his soldiers came by. When the angry crowd saw them, they stopped beating Paul. The soldiers didn't know what was going on, but they knew that they had to calm things down before the people killed Paul. So they arrested him and took him to a nearby prison where he would be safe from the angry mob. The next day, Paul was brought before the Sanhedrin, the highest court of Jewish leaders. When Paul spoke to them, the Sanhedrin members became so angry at what Paul had to say that the Roman commander feared they would tear Paul to pieces. So he put Paul back in prison. While Paul was in prison, the Lord came and spoke to him. Take courage, he said to Paul. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Paul's heart must have been glad when the Lord encouraged him. God always keeps his promises. So Paul knew that even though he was in prison right now, he would surely get to Rome to preach about Jesus. However, the next morning, more than 40 men made a secret plan to kill Paul. They went to the chief priests and elders who also wanted to get rid of Paul and told them about their plot. But Paul's nephew heard about the plan to kill Paul. So he ran to the barracks to tell his uncle what he had heard. And then Paul called one of the soldiers and said, take this young man to your commander. He has very important information. And the commander listened to Paul's nephew tell about the plot to kill Paul. Then the commander said, don't tell anyone that you have told me about this plot. And he sent Paul's helpful nephew on his way. Meanwhile, the commander made a secret plan of his own. He decided to send Paul 
safely away during the night. He sent Paul on his way with 470 soldiers to protect him. They took Paul safely to another city, to Governor Felix, so that he could hear Paul's case. And the next day, the men who wanted to kill Paul could not find him. Paul was no longer in Jerusalem. Remember, God's plan for his servant was that he would preach about Jesus to the leaders of his day, taking the message of the gospel all the way to Rome. And since God is faithful and always keeps his promises, he will certainly take Paul, take Paul safely there. So children, what do you learn from this story? We learned that God had used a young man, Paul's nephew, to protect Paul from his enemies and to help encourage Paul. And God also had used a Roman commander with authority over hundreds of soldiers to protect Paul in Jerusalem. And as he traveled to see Governor Felix in another city. God gives us faithful workers who serve him by helping and guiding us. Now, can you think of someone who served God by helping and guiding you? You are right. Your parents, your teachers, your brothers or sisters could be that someone. And like Paul's nephew, we too can be someone who serve him by helping others. We can be helpful and faithful friends to God's loyal servants. What can you do to be a helper and encourager? Yes, you can start by listening to other people and listening to their needs. And then you can pray for them and help them in any way you can. You can also take part in the church ministries and also spread the gospel to other people. Now, it's time for our memory first. Let's read it together. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Let's read it again one more time. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Now, let's see if we can remember the first correctly. I will remove some first, and let's read together. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Let's erase more words. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. All right, so let's read together 
one last time. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Very good, children. Now, it is time for our catechism. This week, we will go through catechism question 61 to 65. Can you repeat after me? Question 61. How are pious persons saved before the coming of Christ? By believing in a Savior to come. Question 61. How are pious persons saved before the coming of Christ? By believing in a Savior to come. Question 62. How did they show their faith? By offering sacrifices on God's altar. Question 62. How did they show their faith? By offering sacrifices on God's altar. Question 63. What did these sacrifices represent? Christ, the Lamb of God, who was to die for sinners. Question 63. What did these sacrifices represent? Christ, the Lamb of God, who was to die for sinners. Question 64. What offices has Christ? Christ has three offices. Question 64. What offices has Christ? Christ has three offices. Question 65. What are they? The offices of a prophet, of a priest, and of a king. Question 65. What are they? The offices of a prophet, of a priest, and of a king. All right. Now it's time for activities. We have two activities for today. So can you ask your mommy and daddy to print for you? So the first activity on the left is actually a drawing paper. So you can print it out and then you can draw them. Um, and you can see that it is a drawing of Apostle Paul being beaten up and arrested in Jerusalem. And the second activity is a crossword, uh, is, is, a cross, is a word puzzle. So can you find the words that are listed at the bottom of the page? Okay. Now let's sing the doxology to bring all glories back to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So this is the end of our Sunday school today. See you next week and God bless you.